This is a quick video over the probability mass function. So this is actually not that bad of an idea. What it looks like, it's just a little simple f, small simple f, and q. You might also see it as f, little funky x, but I mean overall it's just, it's pretty simple. So it looks something like that. So let's say, let's say we have some variable q. And what Q is defined as is defined as the number, the number of heads we get if we flip a coin, flip a coin, a coin two times. So then Q can be either zero, so you can flip a coin twice and get zero heads, one, get one, flip it twice and get one head, or flip it twice and get heads up both times. So all the probability mass function is is just saying. I want to know what's the probability of getting getting one heads up. So that's just simply having Q, what's the probability of Q equaling one? So again, that's just what's the probability of if I flip a coin twice that one of those one of those flips it was heads. So that's just that is just equal to the probability of getting heads first and then tails. So that's one way of getting just one head, plus the probability of getting heads or sorry tails and then heads. Well, the probability of getting heads on your first flip and then tails on your second flip, that's one-fourth. So I guess I can just do, it's equal to one-fourth plus the probability of getting tails on your first flip and heads on your second flip, that's one-fourth. Fourth. So the probability of getting one heads if you flip it twice is two-fourths or 0 0.5. Now let's say I want to know the probability of getting zero heads, so no heads. Well, that's equal to the probability, or that's equal to just writing it like that. So the probability of getting no heads, that's just the probability of getting tails twice. Tails twice. And that is one-fourth. Now, finally, let's say I want to find out the probability of getting heads twice if we flip a coin twice. So that's equal to P, Q equal 2, or just simply the probability of getting heads on both flips and that is one fourth. So now let's have, well, I'm gonna make a little, a little table. So table, and then we're gonna have F, Q, Q. So if Q is zero, Q is zero, the probability of getting zero heads is one fourth. So the probability mass function is equal to one fourth if Q is zero. If Q is 1, the probability of getting 1 heads, if we flip a coin twice, is 0 0.5, or 2 fourths, 2 fourths. And finally, if Q is 2, or getting heads 2 times, the probability mass function is 1 fourth. Now, let's do some basic definitions. What must, if we have little f, and I'm sorry, this is supposed to be little f like that, so it's designated as a little f. If we have some probability mass function q, qi, so that just means it can either be 0, 1, 2, or any number, it must be greater than or equal to 0. So that must be greater than or equal to 0. It can't ever be negative. It must always be positive. So that's our first rule. Our second rule is that is that the summation, the summation of all the components, so f q i with with i initially starting one going to n number of possibilities. So right now we have one, two, three possibilities. So n is either n, I guess is what you would say is n is equal to three. So n <laughs> so n is equal to three. So n. And that must sum up to 1. So let's test that. So uh, qi, so we're going to say q1, so f q1, well that's just getting a 0, so that's just f0, and then we got to add in, so that's equal to 1 again, then we got to add in f q2, well that's just f equal to, f equal to 1, plus plus f q3 f 
and that's two, two. So I guess I shouldn't have actually erased that. So this is one. So this is Q1. This is Q2. This is Q3. Q3. And I mean that might seem kind of pointless, but naming it one, two, three, why not just say that Q0? It's just because of the notation. It starts off at one here. So finally. What is that actually equal? So 1, that must equal 1. So what is 0? So that's 1 fourth, 1 fourth, plus 2 fourths, 2 fourths, plus 1 fourth, 1 fourth. So what we get, we get that is equal to 1. So that's our third definition. And finally, and finally, I kind of find this odd, but... This is our third definition, and it's what I've been saying, or this is what I'll, it's actually how I started it. So I said f q i is equal to, and I can probably write that a little bit better. So we have f q i is equal to the probability of q of q equaling q i. So, I mean, that's how, this is actually how I define what the probability mass function is, and then I think of these secondary, secondary meanings. So, really, I, this is how I personally think of it. I see fqi is equal to the probability of q being qi. That's how I see it, and then I know that qi must be greater than or equal to zero. It can never be negative. So, never negative. Never negative. And the summation of all the QIs and the probability mass function must equal 1. So, the probability mass function is just simply these three rules.